Today's classic interview goes back to September of 2010, and it's with William Murray. William Murray was at the time the chairman of the Religious Freedom Coalition. It probably won't surprise you to hear that the Religious Freedom Coalition didn't really seem to be that much about religious freedom, but more about criticizing progressives, Democrats, liberals, and anyone that they believed to be un non Christian. And that happened to include President Obama. And the reason I chose this interview for this week is that we've seen the Obama's a Muslim attacks escalate over the last six years. And when we see them change a little bit every day, it can be hard to step back and get perspective over how much they've changed over a longer period of time. And when I went back and listened to this interview with William Murray that we're going to play for you, I noticed that it was quite different from the same types of of individuals that are making Obama is a Muslim claims today. Let's see if you agree with me and then I'll give you my thoughts. And joining us on the phone is William Murray, chairman of the Religious Freedom Coalition in Washington, D.C. You can also get more information at no 911 mosqueorg Hey, William, thanks for calling in. Great, great to be on with you, David. Hey, so tell me, what exactly is the goal of your organization? Well, the Religious Freedom Coalition itself uh, works in the United States and overseas, principally in the Middle East. Uh, we work on the rights of Christians. Uh, we do a tremendous amount of work with uh, the repressed Christians in the Middle East, particularly Iraqi Christian refugees. Um, some with, uh, you know, with the church burnings and and, and the massacres in in uh, uh, Nigeria, and some in Pakistan. So that's our foreign work. Um, domestically in the United States, we make an attempt to make sure that the same thing doesn't happen to the rights of Christians in the United States that has happened to a lot of places in the world. And do you think that there's a, uh, uh, imminent risk of Christians losing rights in the U.S.? Well, I, I think we can take a look at this 9-11 mosque situation and, and see problems almost immediately. Really? Um, there are, I don't know how many hundreds of churches in the United States that have been refused building permits at one point or another by zoning commissions because uh, many times they're just told flat out, look, you're a nonprofit institution. We need people that are in, in our town or in our county to pay taxes. You're going to have to move across the line. Um, I know several instances where this has happened in, in, in New York State. Um, we also have a situation in where you have had uh, uh, a professor just literally fired because he was uh, teaching a, a course on Catholicism and made the mistake of saying, I actually believe what I'm teaching, and he was fired for hate crimes, basically. Um, but and, so how uh, is the 9-11, how is the, what you're calling the 9-11 mosque, uh, which, by the way, I would never call it that, I call it the Lower Manhattan Community Center, how is that representative of Christians losing rights? Well, I think, first of all, let's get our terms straight. I know let's. it's nice to redefine Ground Zero as only being the Twin Towers, but there were 15 buildings uh, destroyed and, and more than 20 um, uh, damaged, uh, including uh, the, the Marriott, the Hilton. That building that you're talking about that you want to call Lower Manhattan, the landing gear of one of the aircraft went through it. Human remains were removed from it. Now, if you want to say that we're part of the airplane crashed isn't ground zero, fine with me. But I think the families whose loved ones' remains were in that building would probably consider it part of ground zero. L listen, the, the, the real issue to me is not so much whether we call it a, a ground zero mosque or not. I don't happen to think that that's an appropriate name, but be that as it may, there are already mosques closer to where the Twin Towers were than this one, right? No, that's not true. Well, I'm looking at a map right in front of me, and I can I can see very clearly that that it is the case. And we've we've even we even had uh, we've had guests who 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 have corroborated that, who work right in that area. I mean, I think regardless, I don't want to get bogged down in that. What well, is it I, about? I know, but it, it wasn't. It, it we're not talking about a 13-story building where people are going to be discriminated against, where women are going to be able to use the swimming pool at the same time as men, where undoubtedly no Jewish person is going to be hired. There's certainly not going to be any pork sandwiches sold. Um, you know, we, we, this is, this is a situation in which you have uh, uh, individuals who want to build something, and they have the right to build it, no matter how offensive it is to the overwhelming majority of the people of the United States. They have that right. But what, what we find is many people in the media and the left who are saying, 
those who tell them that it's offensive and shouldn't be built, they should be censored, they should shut up, they don't have a right to speak their mind, they don't have a right to have an opinion. The only one that can have that opinion, of course, is the Muslims and us. But hold on a second. I, uh, you're saying that when you turn on, for example, Fox News, you're not seeing just exactly that opinion? That opinion doesn't seem to be suppressed in any way to me. Well, you don't even want to call. You don't even want to say that this this mosque is a part of Ground Zero. You know, we 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 have to be realistic about this. Uh, we can criticize Fox News, of course. And we can also say, hey, look at MSNBC, where you have people uh, just literally scowling at other individuals and screaming at them because they, they, they disagree with them. Should mosques be built anywhere in Manhattan? It should, or, or, would that be okay with you? I mean, how far would be okay? There are over 100 mosques in New York City right now. But, well, that's right. And there's, there's ones even closer to Ground Zero. But new mosques, would it be okay with you to build a new mosque somewhere else on Manhattan Island? Yes, and, and it would be nice if it were built by people who would say where the money came from. This is another major problem that I think a lot of us have. $4.8 million cash was paid for that property, and it is, there is no nonprofit corporation, so forget about that. That doesn't exist. Uh, they're saying that at some time in the future, and, and the taxes, by the way, on haven't been paid at all. They're delinquent on the building by more than a quarter of a million dollars. But uh, uh, we're told that at some time in the future, a nonprofit organization is going to be built, that at some time in the future, it's going to have a 22-man board of directors, that Imam Rolf has a minor figure that's only going to be one of those 22 people on that board of directors, and that there's no idea who controls it, no concept. This money could have come from the family of Osama bin Laden. It could have come from the Tooth Fairy. It maybe you financed it. Who knows? Yeah, well, no. You see, now I think we're getting somewhere, William, where we really can agree because I also have concerns about the, the funding of this building. And we spoke about this last week with uh, former terrorist Walid Shabbat. And my real concern is that uh, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars were given was given to the the building of this project by by the Saudi prince uh, bin Talal, and he has just put in billions into Fox News. And when I hear We've got a guy funding this mosque, and he's also the Fox News, uh, you know, other than Rupert Murdoch, the biggest shareholder. I'm concerned about that. Are, are you not? Well, yeah, well the, 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 the good sheik didn't get his money. He, he wanted to have as much influence on Fox as he does on CNN, and apparently that isn't happening. So you're, you're not particularly concerned by that connection? Well, I, you know, it, it bothers me when somebody that have a, a, a predominantly ideological agenda make a major uh, uh, purchase. Yes, it bothers me. I mean, it would, it would bother me if George Soros bought um, the Dallas Morning News or if, uh, you know, some far right wing guy just totally owned something. Uh, and their, their well, they whole do. <laughs> purpose was ideological <laughs> in, in nature. Do you believe Barack Obama is anything other than a Christian? You know, he says he's a Christian. Right. And, and, <laughs> and uh, uh, in, in our country, you know, who, when somebody says there's something, um, we, we honor that. I mean, Nancy Pelosi says that she's a Catholic. Uh, there, there are, you know, a lot of priests and bishops that will disagree with that statement, but that's what <laughs> she says. And Barack right. Obama says he's a Christian. Now, there, there are people that say, okay, uh, because he believes in collectivist salvation and not personal salvation, he's really not a Christian. That isn't the issue. No. The issue is what he says that he is. And what do you believe? Do you take him at his word? I mean, what do you have any evidence to suggest otherwise? I, I hear some hesitation in your voice. No, well, I, see, as a Christian, I, I believe in personal salvation. And I believe that, that um, uh, you know, he says he's a Christian, of course, but he does believe in the liberation theology concept of, of, of collective salvation, that, that you all get together and you do some great thing, you save society, and then everybody is collectively uh, uh, saved, whether or not they, you know, particularly are Christian or non-Christian or, or whatever. I don't believe in that concept, but that's not important. He does, and he believes that that is a form of Christianity, and he says he is a Christian. And, uh, you know, people that, uh, that believe he's a Muslim, I understand why the number of people has grown from 9% to 24% that believe really? he's a Muslim. I understand why that has happened. Wow. But, hmm? That's, that's incredible. I mean, what, what, how, why? Why has that happened? Why is that logical? Well, I, I, 
you know, it, it's a, um, uh, a, cumulative, a cumulative situation. Uh, for instance, uh, he became president of the United States. The, the first television interview he did was with Arab television. And, uh, you know, in which he said the sweetest sound he's ever heard is, uh, is uh, <laughs> you know, is the evening prayers. And, and I think that, that several of those things and, and the Cairo speech and other things um, have led people to think that perhaps he has an agenda that is pro-Muslim or might be Muslim. So it's collective. Now, I, I think part of this is the White House's problem, too, to be very honest with you. And both liberals and conservatives had said this. This isn't me. And that is the fact that, that um, uh, there has been very little to challenge this out of the White House. I think in, in, in future weeks or months, we're probably going to see Barack Obama and, and his family headed into the local church. Or well, hold on a second, William. We've, seen, we've, we've, we'll seen, we've seen Obama in churches for years, and I think, I think the White House is right not to mention it. I mean, Barack Obama... Uh, has no reason to, you know, it's it's kind of a, he, in the same way that I'm surprised he even commented on the whole birther thing. Hey, listen, I can't go around all the time showing people my birth certificate. It's not really something he has to constantly be doing, proving he's a Christian. I mean, I think it's a pretty extremist movement that is pushing this. No, thing. no, no. I, I, and I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that I expect the White House to do that. I'm I'm not telling him to do that gotcha uh, you know I, I am i am i say that i believe that because there is this rising number of people that believe that he is a muslim that we are going to see a reaction from the white house because of it hey last question i always ask all of our guests from christian organizations about this i'm jewish i don't believe in jesus am i going to hell you know i i i also run a pack it's called government is not god pack and we support Jewish candidates, and uh, there are all kind of, 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 of theories about, uh, there, there are people that are Christian that say, well, you know, you, you, you have to have Jews at Jesus. There are others that believe in the concept of, uh, of two covenants, that the Jews have a separate covenant with God. <laughs> but what do and, you believe? that Christians have another covenant. What do you believe, uh, William? Well, that's just it. That is a theological argument that isn't in my pay grade. <laughs> so you don't even want to give me your opinion. Well, but not, well like I said, it's a theo I am I am not a theologian. It's not in my pay grade. All right, you don't even want to give me a. You don't want to hint at an answer. Well, I, I'm. It, it it is not an area that I'm expert in, and I have heard both arguments <laughs> presented to me very very well by friends of mine that are that, that are that are Jewish and otherwise, and it it is an argument that it is a good argument. The the concept that, that God has a separate covenant with the Jews is a very good argument, and I've listened to it, and uh, it is something that with my Jewish friends, I don't care to argue. All right, William Murray, chairman of the Religious Freedom Coalition, no911mosque.org is the website. We, we don't agree on much, but I'm glad to have spoken to you today. Thanks for calling in. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, God take bless. care. So the biggest difference that I saw here in checking out this interview with William Murray is that while the claims being made today are not that different from many of the claims being made by William Murray in this 2010 interview. The tenor and tone has become much more aggressive, much more xenophobic and openly racist, although there were still undertones of that, of course, back in 2010 with people like William Murray. And ad hominems and an anger is much more prevalent within the argument. So I think it's interesting that as President Obama's tenure has gone on, as his first term came and went, and now his second term is more than halfway done, or right, right around halfway done, actually, um, we see that the arguments remain similar, amazingly, because of all the data we now have that should easily disprove these. But the tone and tenor has escalated significantly. William Murray, the the arguments were insanely xenophobic and not based in fact and and so on and so forth. But his demeanor was far less aggressive than many of the birther types that we talk to today. So that's William Murray. That's the classic interview for this week. We will be back after this with your questions. Submit them at davidpackman.com via Twitter, via Facebook, or by calling our voicemail number 2192 David P.